Hey everybody, it's Michael with MichaelDrewMusic.com. I thought today we'd do a quick video on the key signature. And so today we're going to break this video down into four basic questions. What is the key signature on paper? What does the key signature do? How many key signatures are there? And why do key signatures matter? How do they help us play music? That's our topic. Let's split the screen. We're going to break this down. So what is a key signature on paper? Well, when you read music, the first thing you're going to see is you're going to see your clef. Now, typically treble clef or bass clef, those are the two most common, although there are others. And the clef has to do with the range of notes that we play. Following the clef is our key signature. Now, you may see nothing there. It may just be blank. Or you may see as many as seven sharps or seven flats. So that's the key signature. It's the sharps or flats at the beginning of the piece. We can't have sharps and flats in a key signature. It will either be all sharps or all flats or nothing in the case of C. Um, and then following that, we have the time signature. So the key signature lives between the clef and the time signature. Number two, what does a key signature do? The short answer is a key signature creates a scale. That's what it does. But let's dive into this a little bit more. In music, we have 12 tones. We have 12 pitches in one octave, so the seven white keys on the piano and the five black keys, and then those pitches simply reset in other octaves, okay? So we don't have 13 notes, we don't have 11, we have 12. Each one of those 12 tones has a scale that is built upon it. Now, what is a scale? A scale is a certain pattern of notes that sounds good together. And in Western music, the scale that we most use is called the major scale. And the major scale has a certain pattern of whole steps and half steps. This is whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Okay, now a whole step would mean we move two notes up, and a half step would mean we move one note up. Now, I dive into the major scale much more in detail in my video on major scales. So if you're interested in that, please check that out. But for now, we want to just know that it's that pattern. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Now, if I start on the note C, and I play to the next C, and I play all white keys. That is a C major scale with no sharps, no flats, no black keys. It's just going all white keys. It just so happens to create the whole, whole half, whole, whole, whole half. Okay, so if you're in the key of C, at the beginning of your piece, you're gonna see your clef, then you're going to see nothing, and then you are going to see your time signature. There'll just be a blank key signature there, no sharps, no flats. But C is unique in that way. C is the only major key that has no sharps, no flats. All the other keys are going to have something there. Now, if you go down one half step and play from B to B and play the same pattern of whole steps and half steps, you are going to have to sharp five notes. Okay, so five white keys have to go up to black keys to make that same pattern work. If you start on G, you're going to have to sharp one note. If you start on E flat, you're going to have to flat three notes. Now, some scales have sharps, some scales have flats. And that is another topic that I get into in my scale video. So again, check those out. I would refer you there for more information on why that is. But for the sake of today's video, I just want you to know that it's either going to be the key of C, no sharps, no flats, or it's going to be a sharp key, or it's going to be a flat key. Those are our three options. So we have 12 tones, each one with its own major scale, and therefore each one with its own key signature. So right now we're at 12 scales, 12 key signatures, but there's still more. We have minor scales. Okay, now what is a minor scale? A minor scale is the same thing as a major scale, except it starts and ends on a different note. Okay, so if you think about the key of C, going back to all white keys, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, if I take that set of notes and I start it on A and ended on A. Instead of starting and ending on C, I start and end on A. That would be an A minor scale. So A minor and C major have the same notes in them. The only difference is where you start and end the pattern. That's why we call these two scales relative keys. Okay, and relative keys means that they share a key signature. They both have no sharps and no flats in the key signature. And every major scale would have a minor scale that shares its key signature. This leads us to number three. How many key signatures are there in music? This is a bit of a loaded question. So we've already established 12 pitches. 
each with their own major scale and key signature, and then the relative minor scale that goes along with that, right? Now, this is a little bit confusing because three of those 12 scales can be spelled two different ways. And the fancy term for this in music is an enharmonic equivalent. That's a term that means there are two different spellings for the same pitches, okay, for the same notes. So we're going to play it the same way. We're just going to call it two different things. And those three enharmonic equivalents are F sharp and G flat. Okay, so an F sharp scale can be written with the six sharps. You can also write it with six flats as the key of G flat. We would also have B and C flat, and we would have D flat and C sharp. Those three keys have two different spellings that are available. All the other keys can only be spelled one way. That gives us 15. And I was just listening to an interview with a famous musician who was arguing that there are 30 keys in music, the 15 majors and then their relative 15 minors. I think I half agree with that. Um, I think on paper, that's absolutely right. We can write 15 different key signatures, and we should know what those enharmonic equivalents are. We should know those. So I think that's true in theory. However, in practice, we still only have 12 pitches. We don't have 15 pitches. We have 12 pitches with 12 scales. And so just because you can write three of them two different ways doesn't give us more pitches. It just gives us another way to write certain scales. So I think in practice, I would still say 12 pitches, 12 scales, 24 keys, your 12 majors and your 12 minors. Number four, how do key signatures help us play music? Well, what they do is they center us tonally. They give us a tonal center upon which to build our music. What that tonal center is, is a scale. That's what it is. A scale is a set of notes that sound good together. It's a set of pitches that work together. Have you ever been to a playground and seen those big toy xylophone things where you can hit them with mallets and notice that those are usually pitched to a major scale. Usually there are seven pitches on there, not 12. Because if it's tuned to a major scale, anything you play on there will sound good, right? And so that's what they're doing is they're pitching that to a major scale because when little kids get on there and hit those notes, anything they play sounds good. I mean, it's amazing. And that's what a scale does for us. A scale centers us in that way to help us to achieve optimal results when we are trying to write our own songs, when we are learning music. Music theory is just our way of trying to understand music. It's not unlike the spelling of words. I can take a word and spell it however I want, but that doesn't mean it's going to be the correct spelling. There's one right way to spell the word, right? And so that's the way it is with music. You know, we can call a note an A or a Z, and it's not going to change the pitch of that note. You can call it whatever you want. But music theory is our universal understanding of music. It's how we communicate music. It's how we understand music. And it's how we leverage music to our advantage when we're trying to compose or learn. It's a way of helping us contain music and not guess. And that's the point of the key signature. Well, thanks everybody for joining me in this discussion on key signatures. If you found this content helpful, please be sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video. Leave me comments down below and let me know if you have any thoughts or if you have any topics for future videos that you would like to see. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful time making music and I will see you next time.